Um, so maybe I can make a start. On, make a start. I think the recording is already set, right? Not sure if uh, Balak is here. Yeah, but I can see that. Yep, it's uh, st recording already. Yeah. So yeah. hello everyone and uh, welcome to this last session. Um, the, this is going to be the last one from this uh, series of four workshops that we have been organized in the last um, one month and a an half, I guess, something like that. We start uh, a couple of weeks ago, every two every two weeks, and um, and just a quick recap recap so far what we have done so far. Um, a part of the first presentation in which we had like this first introduction of why we should script. We had the second session for those who don't remember um, or th for those that only start to attend this uh, workshop um, in these last sessions. In the second session, we had uh, um, uh, a brief demonstration on how we can use Python to automate the input, the Plaxis input process and workflow and we create uh, a 3D model like this, this, like this one here, in which is a PAL raft with different pile diameters and lengths, and uh, we are in typical ground London uh, London ground conditions, and uh, for and we try to automate all the, the entire process to set up this model in order to do the short term and long term behavior. That was a second session, and if you all if you all recalled in the last session, we mainly dedicated on Plaxis output in order to extract results from the Plaxis model that we ran from the second the second session. So we at the end of the, the at the end of the session we generate two CSV files. One is for the containing all the results. So let me just open here the Excel. One containing all the results for the better beams in all stages, not only not only on the top, but also at length. So if I just hide the soil, that was. So if this is the power layout that we model in the, in, the, in our Plaxis 3D model with different diameters, and as you can see, it has different lengths and in total we are talking about 80 piles. OK, so what we did is we extract for stage for stage two, stage three, stage four. Stage two is the construction of the raft. Stage three is the short term and stage four is the long term. OK, so at the end of the day, we end up creating a, um, a tablet result of the all the results of the better beam for all the phase for all the piles in the, all these three phases. And it should it should be a, it's an Excel file that has a, approximately uh, seven and seven thousand and one hundred piles, uh, some lines. Sorry, lines of uh, of data. So, for different types uh, types of results of the better beam, vertical displacement, actual forces, shear forces, bending moments, um, and also we took the liberty to define what we call EOLS force, which is basically the SLS multiplied by a factor. Okay. Uh, we explored that in the last session, and we also did the same thing for the raft. Okay, similar thing, and we had a, an Excel file with 400 lines of of, of information, which is okay, fine. It, 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 we can we, we already see that from the last session that at least for the better, it can it kind of pays off. To have something that can automatically extract these results, especially if in Plaxis you have to extract the results one by one for piles. But we are still not, we still haven't yet touched the, the, the limits of what we can do with processing and plotting the data because at the moment what we have is just a table of result. But I mean, if I want to take make sense of the, out of this, it's just raw data that, that is, it's, it's me structure, but it's not yet structured in a way that I can start to draw some conclusions and try to understand if the piles are behaving as expected. So what is missing here is a little bit of post-processing and maybe and also some plotting, which we're going to explore in this session. Okay. So I'm guessing that all, all of you um received the email from Palak um with the script for the first this first section. 
uh, this first section is going to be pure, pure Python. We are not going, we're only going to plug is just to compare results, but we are not going to do any uh, scripting on the output because we already extract, uh, we assume that we extract all the results and today is just post processing. Okay. So let's start with the first thing. First thing we want to do is, uh, like we already did in the previous sessions, is we first we have to call in our script before we start to do anything we have to import and the loading the models that we want to run uh the, the that are going to be useful for for us to do what we want with the script in this case for the post processing one of them is pandas which we already explored in the last session uh, another one is uh, npy which is a linear algebra the, um, model that that allow um um like uh, use uh, function similar to matlab if so it's useful if you want to create matrix or if you want to do uh vectorizing calculation linear algebra and analysis sort of things uh math also the math math for mathematical operations this os is to import a model that allows you to do operations in uh, in the operating system like for example if you want the script to create folders or delete files from your from uh, from the certain uh, directory in your pc you can do that with this model this is one of the most important things which is the matplot matplot uh, which is the model python model that allows you to uh generate a plot OK, so we are going to use this matplotlib uh, and we all go, we're going to define pandas as PD and, and numpy and NP and matplotlib we're going to define as PLT. So for all the operations we're going to do later for plotting, you will see that it all is going to start with the, this object PLT and then something, OK? And of course, we have here just the, these are just reference for the missing code that is in the code, so I'm able to run it in the background. But uh, it's the the, it's the piece of code that you've you as an exercise you have to figure out you have to try to figure out to uh, figure out how to fill the missing code, and then next week I will provide the full solution, of course. Okay, so we start. Let me just um, for before to just clear the, the output. Okay. It's clear. Well, let's initialize this one. First one. So control enter, if you recall all recalled, uh, to run the individual shell. Or I could just say run all, but my point is to run one by one so I can demonstrate to you guys how all the script works. So that was the first step initialization. The second one is um we have to because we have this data saved in Excel, this, uh, the data from the previous section, section 3.7 in, in a CSV file, for, for, to be more precise. The first thing we want to do is to import that data into a data frame, okay? So for that, I'm going to use pandas and I'm going to use this function read underscore CSV. Here, just put the name of the, oh, and another thing that is important to make, uh, it's important to, to make sure, of course, is you have to make sure that the, the the folder in which you run the scripts um, contains also the the raw data that you want to import. The, the 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 script and the raw data needs to be located in the same folder. Okay, so otherwise, if it's not, you have to put here the file directory to 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 access the file. It's possible to access in different folders, but you have to describe that to the script. To say okay, what where exactly in your computer these files are safe. Okay, so. We want to import this data, this this data here, and this this is the data that inside of this CSV file. And then the, the the other the other parameter that we have to assign is header equal to zero. So I'm telling to the program that my header is the first line. Okay, um, in Python zero starts uh, usually the first index or the first uh, element of a, any object. It starts at zero, so it's uh so you so it, if it is line one it's going to be index zero okay so so you're saying okay i want the first index of the lines to be my header okay and also we have to define what is the index column uh as you recall 
in the set in the in the last in the last session when we save these files it generate these files and it also print this column here with numbers so these numbers are are the index that was the index from the, the of, of the data from from the previous section uh, session okay so at the first row there was an the row that is located at index zero, uh, zero you had the, this set of values, uh, index, uh, so zero, uh, zero, and the second one, one, it, it contains this one, and so on. So, so what I'm telling is, okay, I, I'm just informing pandas that I want this column to be interpreted not as a column, but as an index of my data frame, okay? And you'll see why this is important. So now if I run this, as you can see, it's the same data frame that contains 7,800 rows, okay, 10 columns. So this, this should be more or less the same, the, this should be the same number of lines. So if I go here, not counting, of course, with the other, of course. So if I, if I just do it. So you see that it's going to be, uh, let me select all the, everything, just a moment. Yeah, you, you see that it contains 780 lines, seven, uh, seven, um, 7,080 lines, okay? Um, so we have here, uh, and we have 10 columns, okay? Uh, but as you can see, I mean, it's a lot, it's a big data frame with a lot of lines, so you, it's not possible. I mean, it's, it, it is possible if you change the settings of no, uh, Jupyter Notebook, but by default, you're not, uh, you're not able to see the entire data frame because otherwise it will become a large, a large uh, preview to, to see. So what you can do is if you are interested just to see the first, I don't know, 50, 50 elements of that data frame, you can put the name of the data frame. We're going to say we save. By the way, we save this data frame inside of this variable called df underscore pre underscore piles. So if I want to just to see the first 50 values, I can put this add function, okay? And the number of the elements I want to see. So if I run this, you see that now I can visualize the first, oh, sorry, scroll, scroll down a little a bit more. Um, so you see that now we, we are here. We are previewing the first 50 elements of that of that data frame, and the same thing we can do backwards. So we can start from the, the end and see the last 50 if we want. And as you can see, uh, I mean, I mean, give a try. You, you can give a try yourself, and uh, and you see that you see that the data frame that is presented here is going to be the same one that we have in um, CSV file. Okay. So. Um, another way to, to double check if we have the same them this these 7080 80 lines uh if you if you if you don't if you didn't if you didn't add a look to this value first will be to um run the lang function python which if if i put lang um bracket and then the, the, na the name of the data frame it will return a value which is the number of lines that data frame contains so if in that, indeed if i run this there we have we have 7080 lines okay so so far i'm convinced that whatever is saving that variable the df pre files is the information that was that, that was initially stored in that csv file okay same thing for the raft results. So yeah, I'm just going to speed up the, the, the process because it's the same thing as before. Nothing, um, it's the same process. So again, we import, we say what is the index, what is the other, what is the file. And if I want to double check how many lines it has, it has 410. And if I, we go here, to here, we can see that it has these 410 lines. Okay. Okay, that's first step. Nothing too complex so far. Now, here's where we start to do some processing. Okay, so the first thing I want to do is I want to start to filter information. Okay, uh, because as 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 you can see at the moment, if I go back here to the Excel file, I mean, as you can see, it's a, everything is in the tablet format, and uh, although the information is stored structure, uh, if I want to visualize the results just for visible, the results from pile. 80 for stage four, I would need to scroll down or in Excel, I would just apply the, a filter function like from, for example, here. So I could go here and say, well, I want to, now I want to see the results on phase four, stage four. 
on pile negative. Okay, so this is what let's say if if I wanted to plot something, this is how I will do. I will do okay. Now I have this information, and I can use this information to start plot some graphs. Okay. Uh, how do you do this in 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 Python in, using pandas? Simple. What what do you have to do first? You have to create what we call let's let's call this masks. What are, what is a mask? It's a a, a boolean series. It's a boolean let's say series is consider as a panda series as a a special type of data frame that only contains one column. Okay. If it if it contains only one column, it's called a series. If it is more than two columns, it's already called a data frame. Okay. So a mask is nothing more than a data frame with one column, which contains only Boolean information. What, what, uh, so it only contains true or false, true or false, okay? And what exactly we are testing here in terms of logical conditions? What we want to do is, if I call this particular portion here, if I say, okay, well, I want to call my data frame, I put a square bracket with the name of the column, which is face. I want to I want to test what are the lines. In, if if I if I have to use as a comparison the column the the, the face column, I want to get a boolean a, a boolean result that tells me okay line one contains stage four. So if if I go so basically what I'm doing is uh, if I go here to the Excel maybe it's easier to see from from the Excel point of view. Okay, um, so if I go to the first line of my data frame and check, okay, well, let me see what is the value on the, on the column phase underscore i. Is the value equal to stage underscore four? No, it will return a false value. But however, if I go more to, towards the end of this uh, data frame, okay, we have, it, we start to contain stage four, so it will return as a, a, true, a true value. So. And that's exactly what we're going to get. So if I run just this portion here, okay, so I, and I'm saving this result inside of a variable variable called mask one, okay. So if I do this now, you see that, you see what we're getting? We're getting a, a, a panda series, okay. And now, how do I know this is a panda series? Because if I do type panda uh, mask one. There you go. It returns um, it returns uh, the information that this is a, a pandas object that is a series. Okay, so I know that is a series. And as you can see, there's it has a bunch of information with false, 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 and true, 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 which kind of makes sense if you think about the last row. So let's go here to the last row of that data frame here. Uh, if we have here the oh, sorry, uh, yeah, here it makes sense that it returns true because the value at the value at the column uh, face underscore i at that line is stage unders uh, underscore four, so therefore it returns true. And of course, for anything else that doesn't it doesn't contain stage underscore four, it, re it returns false. And you can see that actually. So let's let's assume the, let's say the borderline when we have the borderline between stage underscore three and uh, stage underscore four, which happens in index four. 4719 and 4720. So if I just call mask one with that index number inside in the square bracket, I get false. So it means that if I try to if I try to use this index number, so the another 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 way that another another good thing that is good to know is that you if you know what is the index number and the column you want to obtain the, the values, you can use this function called locked lock comes from locate locate okay locate so you can put the index number or the name of the index if, if the index has a specific name you can put also the name of the index if you want but in this case if you just put index and but with lock you always at least one of them has to be a string if it is just pure numbers it's i lock but if it is if one of them is a name, like for example the column, then use lock. Okay, so if I just run this particular set with lock and then I put square brackets, the index and then the column name, what I'm going to get is, guess what, the stage name. Because basically what I'm selling is, okay, please go, please go to my markers, go to 
um, index uh, 4719 to the column face underscore y and return me the value that is presented there. OK, so that's stage three. And uh, of course, of course, if I if if I do this logical condition now, because now I know that this is stage three, if I say, OK, well, does this value is this value equal to stage four? You can you you can all guess what it is. It's going to be false. So as you can see, there's there's this possibility in in Python uh, in Python for you to do these logical uh, checks. So and this is important when you're running uh, uh, runtime and loops. Sometimes you have to run loops that say, okay, well, if it is false, if it is true, do this. If it is false, do do something else. Okay, and this is the case for a false value. But the same thing can be for the the true value. But so if we go to the to the next index, okay, it's going to be truth. What's the value? It's going to be stage four, and is stage underscore four equal to the string stage underscore four? Of course it is. So we create these masks, but we we haven't yet finished the filtering. Now we want to use that mask to go back to our original original data frame, which contains the raw data, and say, well, I have this this bowling bowling information. Please, based on this bowling information, this only only uh, save in a separate var variable the same data frame, but only with this, with, with only with only the, the 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 index values that contain that value as true. And if I do this, so in this case is let's say if well if I use mask mask one to to test the condition stage underscore four, and if if I now put uh, the name of the data frame in and then the square bracket with the uh, and the name of the mask variable, then what I'm going to get is the same data frame we had before, but already filtered. You see? And there you have it. What we have now is it's going to be uh, instead of those 400, uh, 4,000 lines, we're going to get something that is slightly s s smaller. And it, this is all the results of that data frame that contains stage underscore four, uh, four and as a value for the column face underscore i, and again, I mean, all is good to all is good if you if you are not one hundred percent sure, or if you are still very new on this and you want to make sure that you are doing this correctly. I mean, let's give it a try. If I go here to stage underscore four, I just filtering the stage underscore four. Let me see how many lines I have. Uh, so let's. There we have it. We have three, two thousand, uh, two thousand two hundred sixteen lines, which would be the same ones as here. And again, if I'm not convinced, let's run the link. At least I know that it has the same same number of lines. And then you can see if if you try to test pick a value from here, you see that it will match the one in an Excel. Okay, so far we filtered this with stage underscore four. Uh, Let's do another example now. Instead of stage uh, on the face, let's filter in terms of pound name. Same thing as before. The only difference now, instead of me calling calling the column, uh, instead, instead of going here and put face underscore i, I'm first of all I'm going to create a different variable called mask two. I'm going to call the same data frame, the original data frame, and but now in the column name, I'm just going to put the name of the col of the column that contains the pound names, which is call as a string that is pal space name, and I will say, well, do this mask, do, do provide me the the boolean values that that contains the the num the the list of index that contains in this column this string value, which is p80. So if I do this, I get, I get a, a data frame, a series data frame with the same number of lines as the, the original data, uh, the, uh, data frame. Okay. And now if I apply that mask in order to filter that data, I get this. So what I'm going to get is, uh, I'm going to get this and then how many lines I get? 45. So let's have a look. That should be pretty much what we get. Uh, so it's this one. Um, select all. Let's. Yep, 
45 records found. That's so, as, as you can see, we all, we, so far we only filter based on one information, but what if I want to filter more? I want to have two conditions of filtering. I want to filter, let's say, uh, well, let's say that I want to just to get the results from the, the P P80 results, but only in stage four. Well, we have already the masks done. We don't need to do anything else rather than instead of running this operation with just one mask variable, we put the two mask variable with this operated end and in this operated end, it's the logical operation end and or it is uh, this one here. OK, oh, sorry. Let me see if I can just find the is on my keyboard the right. Uh, don't know where is the in this keyboard and but what you can also so you can put if you put just or also so you can put and or or you see that it changed color. I would I will display it later once I found here in my keyboard where it is. Uh, it was the, ah this one here sorry is this one here. Okay, it's the vert a vertical a vertical line. Okay, so if I do this, of course, if I say if I run this now, it, it will present this. But if I'd say, well, let's do or instead, instead of n, it's a or. Okay. Well, basically, what I'm saying on this one is going to be, how many, how many, how many we get in fifteen values which is should be what we wanted. OK, so 15 values. So if I, if I now go here and say, well, I just want to select stage four, only 50 records found, which makes sense. But if I instead of if if I, if instead of doing an end, which basically is the intersection of these two, I do an or logical condition, then basically it, it will display all the all the data that contains either P80 and or either stage four. So it's going to be a union of those these results, and what we what I'm going to get now it's a much a much bigger data frame. So it's uh, I'm going to get uh, 2,319 piles, uh, lines. Sorry. So yeah, as you can see, this is the process of filtering. Okay. Uh, the reason I'm taking the I'm taking some time to explain this is because move to the phase of plotting things and also the phase, uh, 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 and also in the next steps of post processing to find the maximum and the minimum we're going to take advantage of these operations in the loop to filter the information as we uh, as we desire in order to say well let's say okay what is what is the maximum so uh, so the idea is let's future the information to the pile and the respective phase and then say okay inside of that filter data what is the maximum what is the minimum or grab that data just to plot. So as as you can see, um, the operation itself alone doesn't do any. It's not very useful. But if you apply this to a loop, that's where the that's where the most excited things start to happen. Okay, so let's move on to the next phase, which is going to be um, let's now that we have this information filter. One information that I might want to understand at first is okay. Well. I have all the data. I still haven't yet checked. I still haven't checked the plots, but I want to understand already what are the maximums, what are the minimums, uh, and at which elevations these maximum and minimum occur. Okay. And for this one, um, my apologies if I didn't ap apply the two methods in the exercise I sent it to you, but it, it will be on the complete in the, in the complete uh, um, in the complete version of this script. Uh, we're going to do one that, that I, I like to call rudimentary and more linear approach. Uh, and I will explain later why I'm calling this more rudimentary because it's not, it it works. We can get the results we want, but you see that it takes more effort and more line of codes to get there. And then there will be a smarter way of doing that. You, with just a couple of lines, you can get the same outcome very easily. So also to illustrate that with this thing, we, scripting there's no such there's no su one such way of doing things different dif there are different ways different approach to get the same of the same results and they are all valid some are more more easy go more easy to do it others are more difficult but then maybe generate less code so it depends on the preference of each one okay but okay let's let's start with this one 
with, with the rudimentary approach. So first thing I want to do is um, I want to understand from the from the rudimentary from from the sorry from the raw data frame, data frame how many what are the unique values that I have in terms of palm names okay okay well, when I say unique it's the or, or what are the values that are unique in this case I know it's going to be 80 values it's going to be each pile name names it's going to start from pile one pile two until we reach pile 80. so if I do this if I run this and then I'm I'm doing I'm using this unique command that basically returns this into a a array and not a numpy array and then I'm converting this to a list so if I run this you see that it gen my outcome would be a list which contains the 80 val 80 names of the pile of each pile so it starts from one and then ends in 80 okay so I'm just creating this same thing I will do for the faces it's just going to be three so if I uh, it's the same procedure so if I run this you see this is going to be a list with three elements only okay and i'm doing this because these are going to be the the values that i want to iterate i'm going to uh, i'm going to create a nest loop so it's going to be a loop inside the loop similar to the one that we talked about last session okay that we have a loop and then you have another loop so we are going to do, do loops that iterate these values for the list so that's this is going to be the values that we we're going to create the loop and iterate it all over okay so now that I have this list, uh, I'm here in in this um, in this part. I'm just creating empty lists, okay? Because the idea is we're going to iterate. Let's say we're going to iterate um, for each pile. So the 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 the, the loop is is very simple to understand. Is you, the first level of loop is iterate over the pile names. Then the second one is iterated over faces. So I'm going to iterate. For for one pile, I'm going to iterate over all the phases, and then once I iterate all the phases, I move on to the next pile. And for each for for and, and for each oper operation, uh, filtering of operation. And so I'm, for example, the first operation will be filtering, let's say, pile and uh, pile one uh, in stage two, and then I'm going to say, okay, well now I, uh, now I'm creating the masks here. Okay, I'm creating the masks, create the filter data, and then it will I will have a data frame that only contains the pile one at phase two and I'm going to say well now I want to understand what are the maximum and the minimum for each different column so I want to understand for example what I, what is the maximum vertical displacement uh, what is uh, uh, the minimal vertical displacement uh, the maximum and, uh, and minimum um, Maximum, sorry, here should be minimum, but okay. Uh, maximum and minimum, okay, for the bending moments, axial forces, and so on. Um, so we're going to do this, and the reason we have these empty, empty lists is because once we extract the results, I want to save, I want to app, uh, append, uh, uh, I want to insert that value inside of the list, like I put the value inside of the list, and then we're using this app, app end function, okay? As happened basically means that it puts a certain value at the last position of the list. So if the list is is empty, it's going to be the first value. But then on the second value, the second time I call that app then on the same list, it will put that second value not at the beginning of the list, but at the at the end of the list. And I'm going to do this. And the whole idea, the whole idea is at the end, when I run this nest loop at the end, I will get a series of lists that are sorted. So the first index is correspond to the first line and the last index will respond to the to the last line of the original data frame and i'm going to do and i'm going to to, to assign everything to inside to a data frame and save it okay so that's the idea the and uh, how do i check the maximum and minimum so to check the maximum and the minimum because i'm because i, I want I, I don't want to check i want to check the maximum but also uh, uh, i was uh, i want i also want to understand where's the location of that maximum okay so it's, instead of me running i could have say well i run this one for example i run this line and say well what's the max i could put that maximum and it would provide the maximum but if you want to do this kind of checks 
for one, for one uh, if you want to check maximum and minimum or something else at the same time, you can use this function called aggregate. So basically aggregate allows you to aggregate the data and performs one or more operation of a specific axis or column. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to say, well, for this column, for this is going to be the filter data, the, the F underscore pile, by the way. So you can see that you have here the data, the, 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 the um, the line of code to filter the data, which basically you can see that I'm creating the masks for the face, for the the pile, and then save this into a temporary variable in which it's going to be, be the filter data. And then I'm going to say, well, go to that filter data, go to the column that corresponds to the vertical displacement. And now I'm going to use the aggregate. And I want one of the operations I want to do is to determine the max. And the other one is going to be determine the index in which the maximum course. You probably already noticed that here there's no such thing. It, it's usually is represented by a string, but here is re represented by a variable. Why? Because that's the part of the exercise that this is part of the challenge that I give you, you guys to figure out. Okay. What I would say is, um, in order to do this, have a look on this link that is presented here. Okay, which kind of contains all the possible operations you can uh, get. Um, with aggregate and gr group by, it's more dedicated for gr pandas group by, which we're going to explore later. That, but but it's also applicable for aggregate. But as you can see, for example, if I go to um, max here, it says compute max look. So my recommendation to you guys is have a look on this web uh, uh, of this site. Try to figure out which one of these um, correspondence is the one that allows you to determine the index where the maximum occur and substitute this value with that value as a string. OK, that's the challenge. So yeah, I'm doing this. If and by if by and if I run just now this, what I'm going to get is this data frame, which basically shows me I have one column that calls, OK, one is that says, OK, where the maximum maximum uh, maximum vertical displacement occur in terms of elevation five what is the corresponding maximum value same thing for minimum values bending moments minimal bending moments um although this is not this is not going to be the minimum bending moments because as i said i've, uh, I've just spot that there's a, a sliding mistake here that these ones should be here so my apologies. Let me just put this as a minimum and run again. Yep. So, so as you can see, we we already have a data frame that kind of summarizes this. And how many lines? Well, let's just to change this here. How many lines we have? We have it's a data frame with 240 rows. Okay, which makes sense because we have 80 piles, right? 80 piles multiplied by three. You get your 200, your 240 lines. So as you can see, it represents the maximum, the maximum of pile one at stage two, maximum of pile one at stage three, maximum of pile one at stage four, and so on. And um, but okay, we're still not right there yet because the way that we are structuring this information, we can present, we can take the we can take more advantage of the functionality of pandas to structure data. At the moment, you just structure it as a two dimension. So you have a, a it's not a, it's not a multi level. So you have only one level of index and one level and one level of column. But we can structure if we want in a hierarchical index in order to say, OK, well, I have one uh, one column, one index column that represents only pile one, and then it's a, sec a second, uh, uh, a sub level which represents a face and so on. How you do that? Simple. Um, one way you'll do it. There are several ways, by the way, but this is one of the ways. OK, this is one of the ways. And we'll see the, in a smarter way, you, you, we even going to do the same thing, but with even better outcomes. But Let's now focus on one way that what I want is because I don't want to mess the original data frame that uh, that has this structure. I'm going to do a copy of that. So, oh, by the way, this data frame is called. Uh, I save everything everything on the, this variable called data frame underscore max meaning. Okay, so all this information is saved there. But now because I want to to 
use that information to create something different. I'm just going to create a copy to make sure that I'm not messing around with that. Okay, so to, in order to create a copy, you just call the data frame, the target data frame dot copy, and save it to a variable. Okay, with, at, at your desire. And now I'm going to use this function called set index, and I'm going to tell the program that my set index is going to be what is going what is going to be the index of that multi-level data frame is going to be the pile and the face. And I'm going to put in place equal to true. The basically in place equal to true it's to avoid you guys to do something because otherwise if I, if I don't do in place for, uh, set true, I'll need to run like this, but put again the name of the of the variable to say what well, this variable is equal to the same variable but with a different index. So the in place kind of allows you to speed up and allows you to write less code. So if you put in place, you don't need to put the equals value behind. Okay, just a, a small a small thing that you I mean doesn't make it doesn't change the outcome of the, the result, but it's something that you will see that if you start to use pandas and uh, and if you want to start to script fast, it's uh, something to keep in mind that function. Okay, and um, but we are not yet there because because if I just run, let's say if I let's let's just run code by code. If I do copy and now if I run just this, okay. Um, sorry, and now let's run the the group, the F the F group. Okay, we have something that is already in terms of in terms of a index hierarchy index, but we are still not yet there again because as you can see, as you can see, uh, the information is not. We want the information to be. We want the the first level to be face. Um, well, it can. It doesn't really it doesn't matter, but we want we want this this information to be sorted in in terms of uh, uh, we want this index to be sorted, okay? And uh, we want this to be presented in a different way. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to use this sorted in order to sort the levels. And if I do this now, run this, you see now that you see how. So what happens is because I wanted to first show the face, right? I wanted to shade the, first the face and then the pile. But because the, so we have stage underscore two, pile one, but then the next one is not stage underscore two. I would expect this one to be stage underscore two, pile two, and so on. So if if you want to change the order of your index, you can use this function sort index and tell, okay, which levels you want to, to level and what is the type of a, a sorting you want to do. Ascending, yes. I'm saying that I want these to be sort uh, uh, from the from the lowest to the highest value. If not, I put false in place true. And if I run this now, you can see that we have the data frame. It's the same data frame as before, but presented in a different way. Which I think, in my point of view, if you want to present a table, if you want to present a clean. Uh, a, a straightforward data uh, table to someone. I think this is this this allows people to understand better what you are trying to do here. Okay, so that's one way. Uh, and I, like I said, this is the rudimentary way. Uh, and you see, and why? Because let's have a look again in the code. Can you see how many lines of code I generate here? Um, I'm not sure if why it's not here, but it should be view. If I put uh, yes, okay, let uh, me add this one, activate. You see, we have one line, we have almost 100 lines of codes uh, just to create this data frame, and then to sort it out, we have another five. So yeah, 100 lines of codes just to to do to, to, to do something that, I mean, it, it, it's not rocket science here, what we are trying to do, it, but it's a lot of line, so lines. And you can see that there's a bit of a repetition here. Like we are repeating this. I mean, we have a, at least 20 lines of code that we are repeating ourselves. Like, well, let's create a different, different list, and also uh, uh, again. And then inside of the loop, you see that inside the loop, we also have a lot of repetitive. I mean, it's not the same operation, but it's kind of similar operation that, that it kind of feels like hmm, there must be a simple way to create this with minimal code and get what I want with minimal effort. Fortunately, there is. That's where that's where we call the smart 
alternative that uh, uh, it's we're going to do the same thing as for section 4.1, but with less line of codes. So how can we do this? Um, let's first have a look. The way we can do this, let's have a look first on, let's go back to the original data frame, the one that contains all the data on structure, on, on processes, uh, etc. Okay. If I call my data frame and I call this variable, the, the function called columns, this basically what it gives me, it gives me an object but that contains a, a list of all the columns names. So, uh, so yeah, for with, with this, I know what, um, I know that this is, let's say if I put len, let's say, I know that this that data frame has 10 columns. So I would expect 10, 10 different names and they kind of, they kind of match up. So it's better just uh, if I just, uh, let's say, so if I could do this and now if just call the data frame here again alone. I know that I have 10, 10, um, 10 columns in this data frame. By expansion, I know what are the names, but with this column I can represent I can instead of me typing the names by myself, I can already automatically get this in the in the list. So you can see that all the names they match to the one that is a data frame. And um and the, the reason I'm doing this is for this process, as you can see, for example, when when we did this operation, the only thing there were some results that I didn't try to check the maximum and the minimum. One of them is the ULS, right? Why I'm not checking the maximum of ULS because the maximum of ULS is going to be this uh, in terms of location. It's going to be the same as as the SLS. The value change, but it's going to be more or less the same way because we just factor. In this case, we just factor by a factor of 1.4 or 1.35, depending if it is compression or tension, or if it is a, a, a bending moment that goes uh, in positive or negative direction, etc. Okay, so let's just screw back this here. Okay, so where where was I? Okay, so here I'm all. I will start to do this. Just I will use. I I, I will save. I'll, uh, I access this, and now I know what is the data frame I want. I can filter the same way I filter I filter the rows before, right? I can also filter columns if I want. So if I if I call again my original data frame, but I just put inside of a, a list the name of the columns that I want to visualize, and save this inside on the data variable. So if I run this now, you see that this is the same data frame that we had before, but now we don't have the ULS columns. And the reason I need, I need to do this because I'm going to apply a function, a pandas function that is going to apply these maximum and minimums in the determine the index in all the columns of the respective data frame that I'm calling. And at the end of the moment, I don't want to do this on ULS. So, okay, I save this in a variable called DF. Okay, fine. Now, this is where the magic starts is instead of us doing that uh, re uh, repetitive work for a uh, work frame that we were applied before, we're just going to do everything by apply this group by, okay? This group by op operation. And this group by operation, what I'm going to do is, I'm going to say, I want to group by the results. I want, I want to go back to that new data frame that I create, the F. I want, to, to group the data frame by file name and face. Okay, so I'm putting a file there, the, and then I apply the aggregate, the same aggregate command that I applied before. Um, I can apply here, so I apply the the maximum and also the location of that maximum. Okay, and now if I run this, you see, generate, gen it generates this much faster. And the and, and I mean in terms of performance, if you think about. It's much faster in terms of computational speed. I mean, here you don't see the difference because it's a very quick operation. But if you're dealing with a lot of data, isn't it's much faster to apply this computational speaking rather than iterating all the lines to get what you want? I mean, in our case, it's quite simple because we it's not a very it, we consider this to be a large data frame, but but in the article of in the optics of the say a data science industry of field. 7,000 lines is nothing. 
what is uh, what they consider to be big is like 1 million, 2 million, 3 million, 10 million lines. So if you have to imagine if you have to iterate this over 10 million lines, right? So the, fun, the, the, the goal of having the functions like this in Pandas is to allow to do that iteration, uh, the, that, uh, that uh, the, these um, uh, loops, nest loops, but instead of you defining the loops yourself, you should define one line of code and do it. And as you can see, I mean, have a look on the, on the structure of the presentation. Not only we have an hierarchical index, but also we have a, a column index that is uh, in, in, de, um, defined in terms of uh, hierarchical, in, in terms of levels, you see? So we have elevation, then we have a sub-column that is called max, and the other one is called, is the one that we have the maximum index. But unfortunately, I mean, we are almost there, but we are not there because what is missing is we just have the, the number of the index here, okay? We still, we only have the number of the index, but it doesn't say anything what what is the elevation in the course. What I know is, for example, for elevation, the maximum value, uh, the the um, uh, sorry sorry for the vertical 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 displacement the maximum value is going to be whatever for example for pile one the stage four and is going to be ten millimeter but the only thing I know is it locates at the index four thousand seven hundred twenty in the original index so I still have to go to that index and extract that result luckily that's not very difficult I mean. You see that this is a little bit of tra uh, train, but basically we are taking advantage of the log function. So I, uh, so if I know what is the index, you remember when I said that if we know the index and we know the column we want to extract the results, we can use the log. So well, what I'm going to do is, I'm going, I'm going to the location of that column. Okay, uh, I'm going to apl apply this fun the the um, um, so it's going to be this, and then. Um, so you see that these two values, this one is the index, and this is the column name, okay? So, and then I put this, save this in, in, into a list. So basically what I'm doing is I'm saying, okay, well, go, but I'm not doing this just for one value. If I just run, for example, this portion here, right? Okay, let's pick up this one, and then if I just run this separately, just for you to see, you see what it gets? I get the list that contains the index, the the index in which all the maximum vertical displacements occur. Okay, so you can see it's a big, a big list of values, and it should be something like should it should be like okay. Um, if I do a length, two hundred forty because it's again like like we said it's eighty piles multiplied by three that gives us the this two hundred forty. Okay. Okay, so let me just delete this part. So yeah, so I put here my index, list of index. I put the the, tar the column target and then I save this inside. Uh, and uh, what I'm get going to get is also a list. So if I just run this again in separate. So if I run this bit here, and now if I... Now we're going to put like this. There you go. What we get here now is is where this maximum is occurring, which is always going to be five in most of the cases. But for example, if if I go, for example, to this one here, let's say many moments, um, or no, but let's say the shear force, let's say. If I just go to shear force, um, then you see, I already have as a list, or as a list, uh, and is already sorted by the the number, the the line numbers uh, the, that is corresponded to the uh, uh, to corresponded to this one here. Okay, this one above. Um, I, I get this. Then what I have to do is okay. Now I have that list. I, I just create. I just call this data frame that I create with the group by, and start add new columns. Okay, and start add new columns, and I name. I'm going to name this as okay. Well. I'm going to call vert uh, in order to create a new column. I, I want to create a new column, for example, in the vertical displacement, and I want to call a sub column called well elevation where the where the 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 vertical displacement is maximum. I do this, and then I put equal to the list, and then this will create a new column, a new column with that information that we are we now extract. So if I do this now, if I run here, oh and 
just to finalize uh, also we have to sort it because if let's let me let me run this again in, in isolation so if i do this and now let's say if i just run this bit here it's i just tied this one here okay what is going to happen here is that see if i can just uh, move around like this yeah you see that my data, I mean, what I want is to have this sorted. So I want all the results re referred to vertical displacement to be located side by side. But if I do this, this column is going to be located at, at the end of uh, at the right, the row, the right, the on the right of the data frame at the end of the data frame. So okay, yeah, I'm doing this. So the the whole idea is, well. I don't want that. I want this to be structured in a different way. So I'm just asked to be ask. I'm asking the program to sort the information. Okay. So I'm going to use this re, re, re index sorted, and then uh, re index. I'm going to ask to re index the columns uh, by put the x x is equal to one. The x is equal to one means columns. Is zero means lines. So I'm doing re re re, re, um, re, re index on that and i'm saying well but i want to do to the index on the on the sort information of this column or, or the sort information of the, the columns of this data frame and say oh and the target is on the columns it's not on the line so if i do this now you see that now everything is sorted so if i so you see that the vertical displacement here now is we have as the first line is going to be elevation where there is the maximum and the maximum value okay so yeah, so that was that was the 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 last I think yeah the oh before I finish this final example of post processing uh, and before we move the plot will be nice to save all this data in an Excel file because we might want to share this to others or use this I don't know for in our in our Excel files uh, for for all the matter for for our we want to to process the information ourselves in Excel. So uh, what I can do is uh, before before I use so on this this one the, um, when we cre when we create this more rudimentary approach, one thing I um, didn't spoke about was I saved that this data frame into a CSV file. So if I put that the name of the data frame called to underscore CSV, it will generate this one here. Yeah, it's save you. It's save you in the root, so you can see I open and now that data frame that was originally created, that is more with the simple simple uh, look, is going to be presented like this. But let's say that I don't want a CSV file. I want the Excel file because I want to because now I want to save. What I want to save, I want to save all the remaining data frames we created. But instead of me creating individual CSV file, I want to save everything inside of an actual Excel um, Excel file. Okay, and uh, and what I'm going to say is, for each data frame, we will correspond to a a sheet, a sheet a, 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 an Excel sheet. Okay, inside of the Excel file. So the way I'm going to do this is, uh, at first, I have to create a variable called Excel writer. So if you, if I, so sorry, it's called writer, but uh, it's associated to an, a panda object that is created by using this panda function called pandas dot Excel writer. And here I put the name of the Excel file that I want to. Uh, what 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 is the name of the the Excel file that I want to create? So it's going to be uh, this one. This name I choose. Uh, port section summary of maximum and minimum results from files. And now with this format, which is uh, not CSV, okay. And then what I'm going to do now is, okay, um, the, uh, the same way I did the CSV with two CSV. Now instead of be two underscore CSV, it's going to be two un underscore Excel. But then I have to put this writer object inside, and then I have to say because this is the the Excel file that is open. It's kind of open to editing. Let's say it's at the moment it's open by the script to to editing. It's not yet saving. And when I say I want to save this information inside of this Excel file, on the sheet name that is this name, whatever name I want to give. Uh, we're going to do this for all these three data frames we created. And once I did, we did this, I have to close it. 
the moment that close is the moment that it generates the Excel file in uh, in our PCs. So let's let's try in this, and now we're going to see that there you go. It appeared on the Excel file here, and if I open this. You see, this one is the, the raw raw information that we create with the rendered material approach. This is the multi-level index of the uh, of, from the uh, from the rendered material approach, but without having the hierarchy, hierarchy uh, levels at the columns. Okay, and the third one is the smarter way that we are now did. And as you can see, I mean, it's from. Um, Interpretation point of view, it's much for me. It's much easier to interpret this data frame because it's already structured in a way that it's easy for me to dig up information I want, rather than go, for example, to this one. Okay, uh, but it really depends what is your final goal here, guys. But uh, just just to to create awareness that if you want to do something complex, you can do it. Okay, yeah. Okay, so now. The next phase now, um, we so far we have been talking about post processing, okay, uh, pandas post processing. Um, the only thing is missing is just to talk about in this session is just uh, plotting. So we are going to plot now uh, the, the information that we got from that we have in that raw data frame. Uh, the the goal is to plot the data to get something like not sure if I have a. I don't have it here, but the idea the the idea is to create for each pile, for each pile, a PDF file that con that contains a series of four plots, one for vertical displacement, another one for bending moments, uh, shear forces, uh, etc. And at the same time, in each plot, I want to mark with a, a red point where's the maximum and where's the minimum, with some annotations. So you see that with Python, it's much easier to do this than in Excel. I mean, if you, in Excel, if you have to do this for one plot, fine. It's not the end of the world. It's much easier to do that in Excel rather than in the Python. But if you have to create, let's say, uh, 80 different Excel files that contains each, each, each Excel file contains, uh, sorry, sorry, 80 different PDF files. Each PDF file contains four plots. So you can see how many plots you have. To, if you had to do this manually in Excel, it would be a, a disaster almost, or no disaster, but it will take a considerable. It will be very time consuming to do that. And also, keep in mind that you want to mark where's the maximum and minimum in the plot. So, yeah, it's it's possible, but I would um, I would say that after doing this for 80 plots for first stages, I would probably. Um, I wouldn't like to see that <laughs> that Excel for a very long time in front of me. Okay, so so the way we're going to do this, we're going to follow the same procedure as we for to identify the unique values. I'm just repeat. I mean, I could use already the values we have created, but I'm just repeating the this initial code that we had for the the, the processing of that uh, the, the the data processing. Uh, so we're going to save in a list the unique values for face. And for numbers, okay, same thing. Um, as you can see, our pile list is not sorted. I want the pile list to be sorted from one, two, three, four, five, but it's not yet. So I can use the sort for sort function to sort that sort this. So now the result is, if I run this on the my list Python list, it will sort the information inside. Um, okay. Now, uh, let's see. See what we want to do is. So what we want to do is now again. We're going to do the same thing with masking. You, if you remember, this is a command for masking. So I, instead of putting this inside of a masking, I'm just running this. Okay, well, I want all the results for part 23. Okay, part 23. And I just want to visualize, and you can see that we have 111 rows, and you can see that it has different um, stages. So the whole idea is to again to do the same thing as the rudimentary process that we're going to do create a nest loop in which we're going to iterate in terms of piles, in terms of phases, and we're going to, we're going to create 
PDFs when we at at the at the beginning of each uh, at each level of the pile pile list for the for the level that respond to the pile names, uh, we're going to, all is to create a new PDF file, a blank one, and then once we feel finish to fill the information, we save it, and then we move move to another pile and we create a new PDF, so on. But for now, what I ought to also to do, I don't want because it's going to generate eighty different files. Okay, I don't want to save this information in the root because otherwise it becomes like a long list of files, <laughs> not structured in in in, uh, in the target directory. So what I'm going to say is, okay, well, I want to save all these results inside of a folder. In the, so I want to have a, a, a folder inside of this uh, in in the root in the root directory that is going to call, let's say, uh, PAL results PDF, and this is where I want ideally to save all my results inside. So this is where I use this pandas model called OS, which allows we we have this command the mk direct. It's for those who are familiar with the command lines in the, in Windows. It's the same command line you use if you want to create on the command lines in the MS DOS um, folders. This is the same. There's some similarities here. Mk dirty. but what I'm doing here, I'm also putting here a logical condition is. If the folder doesn't exist, do this. But if it exists, do nothing. Because what will happen is if there's if I try to run this with a folder that already exists, it will pop up an error. So I, I can give you an example. So if I do create run this, and I'll go here, you see that it created a folder here. But now if I just run this one like this, without any logical condition, you see? Give me an error. Because it says, well, cannot create something that already exists. So that's why I have this logical condition to make sure that if I have to repeat, if I have to rerun the script all over again, or uh, to make sure that if I want to repeat, if I want to rerun the script, and otherwise I would have to go to the directory and delete the folder myself. Uh, this is a clever way to do that. Okay. So, like I said before, we, our goal is a two by two plot for each pile to plot uh, to, uh, to plot all the results for each face. So, to, what I didn't maybe didn't say before is that inside of each pile, pile PDF, so for example, I'm going to create a plot for vertical displacement and I'm going to put three curves. One is going to be for stage two, stage three, and stage four, and, 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 and determine where are the maximum of each one, okay? So as you can see, is an, an S loop, in a loop inside of the loop. So the first loop iterate the pile names and it will create the individual two by two plots. And then on the second loop, it iterates between face names and plot the results. So for each face, it will go to that open PDF for editing, and it will start to add that information on the plotting. Okay. So, and as you can see, I mean, now this is this is the moment that we start to use this object called PLT, which is the the matplotlib. Okay. So, on the first loop, what I'm going to do is I'm going to run this first line. This is plot. Uh, uh, PLT dot subplot. This is the command that allows me to create blank, blank plots. So if I just let's say if I'm just if I just do this, let me see if I can we can visualize this. Yep, you see. If I just run this in isolation, you see what happens? Generates these four plots here, but they are empty. There's no formatting. No formatting. We so far we haven't yet defined scales, axe names, um, values, anything. So it's just empty. At the moment, and I'm saying that it's a two by two. Uh, it's a 15 inch by 15 inch each plot. Okay, and this is important because when you set this to a PDF, um, if you put something very smart, uh, so very large or very small, in terms of visualization, it might sound weird. So it's always good to put some something that, I mean, for this case, 50 by 15 inch. It's okay for the purpose of our exercise, but my recommendation is for you to play around a little bit with this parameter to get the the scaling you want okay and it when i run this it generates two objects one is called a figure it's a figure with four axes and then there's a ray which contains the axis of each figure so it contains each plot so so the figure is the overall it's everything together it's like the op, the global object of the plot and these and this one this array is this one is this the, the the this first plot, this one 
is going to be this one and so on. And this is going to be represented in terms of uh, matrix format. So this is going to be 0, 0, 0, 1, 1, 0, and 1, 1. In terms of imagine this to be a matrix, like if this is a matrix, right? And if you want to refer to a certain plot, say, well, if I want to add information on this plot, then I I know that it's going to be a plot a, a plot with the index 1, 1. OK, line 1, column 1, OK? So yeah, and what I'm going to do is, first thing I'm going to do is give a title. So I, I'm just going to give a title to the plot. So again, let me just run this in separate. Oh, of course, it's not going to work because I didn't save this uh, into variables, but uh, let me just maybe, because it's refer because basically what it generates. So you see that in this line, it says, you, I have one variable, comma, another variable, and then equal to this command. So, so the first variable is going to save this figure object, and the second one is going to get, save this matrix of lots. Let's call it like that, okay? And um, if I go just do this now, let me just put something a value here, just otherwise it's going to give an arrow. You see? Now, when I run this uh, subtitle, uh, it's superior title. OK, I'm already putting title to this and the, year, the idea is that you will, for each loop, you have a variable called I, which is going to be the one of the loop, loop, uh, the, the four loops. So is I is going to be for the pile and J is going to be for the phases. So the idea is for each pile is going to create a plot that and then is going to say, well, if I is equal to P underscore zero one, it is going to generate a title that's okay. Plots for P01 extract from the workshop. Uh, uh, workshop is a, sorry, uh, workshop. Sorry, yep. It's just a small type of, yep. Workshop Plexis model. So yeah, this first loop, you can see that there's, inside of this first loop, there's nothing so there's nothing special. It's just creation and add the title. Is on the second level of loop when we are iterated over the face list. For the for a specific pile name, this is where we start to add information inside. So as you can see, masking again. I'm masking the. Uh, I I need because let's say if the first first thing I'm going to do is the the results of pile one, right? I I have to iterate first on stage two. So I I need to have the filter data for pile one at stage two, okay? And then I do this, create the filter data, and then I start, I I uh, I start to grab the information out of that and try to plot. So the, let me let me see. Let's try to do this. It's just one case, just to 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 have an idea. So if I call i equal to I don't know p zero one and j equal to stage zero two. Okay, let's save it like this. Now let me see if I can we can do this. Let's say run this like this. Should work. Yep. So pile zero one. So that well, that would be the first stage, and then the the the, the other one because we have our, we have already the, the the objects created. I'm not worried about the loops. I'm just running the code one by one in the structure weight. So so the in the way that the loop will run. In sequentially, so if I do this now, should work. Yep, it work, but it's not yet visualizing because it's not visualizing because I have to put display. Yes, I have to put display. So now, if I if I ask to display this figure object, you see what we have here at the moment. Is the results for pile one at stage two, but keep in mind that the information is not yet format. So at the moment, if I see this, if someone presents this to me, I don't know what it is. Uh, or if if this if, let's let's bring it another way. If this was the first time I was seeing this, I would say, well, I don't know what it is. So there's still some work to be done. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to run the loop. I'm going to do uh, at some point. 
uh, on the second loop, it's going to put the, the results for stage two, stage three, stage four. And then once you finish, this portion here is the portion where we start to um, formatting the plots. So as you can see, we refer, remember when I was saying the plots are referred as a matrix. So if I put X underscore Y, which is the name of, uh, of the matrix that contains the, the, the X numbers, the X, the, the, X, uh, the X reference. So if I say, well, zero, zero, and then, um, oh, so, sorry, sorry. No, it's not this one. Sorry, this, this, one, this one is for annotation. I will, I'll come to this one later. Uh, well, actually, I can go. I can go to this one. Let's maybe let's go to first to 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 the formatting. Okay, so um, so if I grab this one, so this is the one. This is the part that we're doing annotation. So you can see that I'm referring to the axis. Then I'm saying, well, okay, what's the title I want? I can also assign titles to each sub plot. I can say, well, I want that first plot to be called vertical display, uh, vertical displacement. Um, uh, if I want, I can put a grid. At the moment, we don't have the grid. I can set the scales. I can uh, set the name of the X labels, X and Y labels. So the X is going to be displacement and the Y is going to be elevation. And uh, yeah, so on. So, and uh, and uh, so if I, if, I, if, if I just run, say if I run just, if I run all of this, together okay and i run this in, in, in isolation just to see if we are able to run this if it's not going to complain i think i hope yep it didn't complain yes now if i run display display this see much better now we are getting we're getting to some uh, somewhere now uh the, the, again keep in mind this is just uh, a very quick example just to show for one particular case then when i run the loop it's going to create something much much interest to see okay so yeah so we have this but i said before that i want also to show the results for maximum and minimum where they are located so that's where where we have to create we have to use the so we use the plot the plot is to plot the data based on these lists but we can also use plot to plot single points. So if I know, if I go back to that, so it's going to be the maximum and minimum, the one that we create from the rudimentary approach, right? If I have that data frame, and uh, uh, if I also apply a mask, I, can, I could potentially say, well, if I know, if I filter the, the data for the specific pile and phase, I can extract not only the maximum value, but the elevation. So I can plot this as a point. Here I'm point, uh, here I'm, Plotting as a line because these variables there are lists, so it's a, a group of a group of values. Well, I mean, what is a line here in Python is is basically a series of markers, of points, and then basically just connecting the points, right? But if you present a list with just one value, it just generates a point. And and at the moment, I'm not caring about formatting, so I'm just allowed. I'm not uh, caring about any format. So what it is going to generate is just going to generate a line that has a blue line. But for the next phase, because blue has been already being used, it's going to automatically assign a different color. But if I want to change the format of the line, if I want to the line to be red or it be points, etc., uh, I can do that. So when I'm plotting this, I can put the values. I can say, well, I can put the string that basically this R means red, and this O, the second the second value of the string represents. What do you want to do? If you want to put markers, there are points or lines, whatever. So if I put always say to represent this as a point. So if I do this now, if and then of course, then I create an annotation in which I'm going to put the text say, okay, well, the maximum is equal is equal to a certain value, which is going to refer to that maximum minimum value that I'm extract from uh, from the filter data. So let's See if we can go now again here. Yeah? Just uh, um, it's not work. It's not working because ah, yeah, because I forgot to copy this part here. Yeah, of course, makes sense. Oh. 
I do this, yeah. Now, if I do display, yeah, you see? See that now we have the result, we have here the points showing where are the maximum, okay? So, so if we do this now, oh, um, don't want to delete this, uh, these parts. So let me just delete this ad additional code that I put just to, to move on to the, to the part that we have to, okay? So now that I have showed to you guys how exactly inside of the loop works, now let's run the loop and see what we're going to get out of this, okay? So if I run this portion here now, I should I should be getting 80 PDF files instead of that instead of this subfolder called PAL results PDF, and uh, the, they all contain the results plot in in a way that we find that it, in the way we desire. Let's say so. Let's go run and you see now it's generating. For now it's still gener it's it's going to take a while, so it's still on PAL six. But you can appreciate how long it takes to even for a a computer, how long it takes to go to the data and generate that. Okay, so so you, you can see that for now. Let's let's focus, for example, on one of these ones. Let's say part one. So you see that before you had like um, uh, part underscore one. Uh, so sorry, part one. So we have here vertical displacement, axial forces, SLR uh, bending moment, and shear forces. Uh, each color represents a stage. So blue, st this one is stage two. The this greenish one is uh, is three, and this reddish is four. Okay. So and also we are representing where the maximum are located. This is a, a consequence of all of that data processing we did before. So it's it wasn't done in vain. We took advantage of that post processing and put that in the plot in a way that we can show to others. Well, sometimes I mean. It's obvious where the maximum is, but if you want to make things more appealing, and I think the, the one of the big advantages of Python, in my opinion, is the is is the quality of the plotting you can get out of that, and some and in terms of quality, in terms of formatting, is much better than Excel. Excel, well, you can generate stuff, but if you want to format, you, you all appreciate that formatting plots in Excel can be. Um, if it is one, is fun, but if you have to format a lot of them, it's, it can be a very time consuming exercise and it, 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 sometimes you don't get the results you desire. But with Python, if you have a, an, uh, an, uh, an algorithm that is already automated and then you just run in loops, you can j easily get something nice like this. And like I said, the idea is to save this. So you see, here I have, here, here, here we have, we have all the results saved in, uh, in different files, okay. So let's say let's open what I don't know this file here. Open the PDF in the editor. Yep, and then you can see it saves here. I mean, you could say that. I mean, yeah. I mean, if 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 this was me, if I had to present this, I would probably change a little bit the the figure size in order to make sure that. This information is not overlapping, but this is something that if you have, I mean, I'm fine with that because if I have to run multiple times this loop by changing these parameters and then until I get what I want, so be it, instead of me doing this on Excel. So yeah, so basically that's pretty much that. I mean, if you see now that we have this, yeah, and it creates and creates all these 80 PDFs, and uh, you can you, you you can appreciate how many uh, how many times the program had to to do some prof filtering that and then plot this. So doing this by hand, uh, well, I wouldn't recommend anyone to do this by hand, but you, you can appreciate how long it would take to do the by hand. For us, it took like I don't know. I mean, if you are saved it for time, it took one minute. So yeah. Yeah, that's that's pretty much that, guys. I mean, in terms of pile results, that's 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 and it's not the only example. There are several examples. You, I mean, once you understand once you understand the process, if you know to do one thing, then the sky is the limit for what you want to do. If you want to do something even more complex, you can do it. But unfortunately, for the 
the time we have available, we cannot explore more cases. What I give you as a, what I will present you as a, as a challenge is so far we have been talking about piles. We have, we didn't talk about anything about rafts, right? But that's going to be the challenge for you guys to 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 do it. Now that you know how to do this for piles, try to apply the same method, the same ideas, same methodologies, but apply on the rafts. So at the end of the day, what we want is we have the raft results, and this is the outcome that we are looking. Okay, we want we want one PDF. It's just one PDF as an outcome where we're going to get, but it's one PDF that is uh, um, it's going to be a two by three plot in which the first line is the section. If you if all recall in the in the previous in previous exercise, we draw we we remove results from two from two. Um, Sections one that is called we call this north south and this is going to be west uh, west east if we assume that uh, white correspond to the north and the e, e, x correspond to east let's say uh, so one is going to be one section and the other one is going to be the other section and we only start results for two phases stage for um, stage three I guess yeah stage let me see yeah stage three and stage four yeah. And yeah, the idea is okay. Well, we have the we have the data frame. Well, let's plot this, okay. And uh, what I would say to you guys is that um, it's the same. I mean, I mean, really, really, really. If you know, if you if you if you understand the process of doing this, then to do to, for something different, it's not going to be exactly one hundred percent the same code. But if you understand the logic, then you can tweak the code to do what you want to to do the, to do the things you want. Um, to help you out for this exercise, I already put a part, some part of the code here that I think as a head start, for example, to create the, the, the folder um, in terms of bending moments and uh, um, bending moments and uh, shear force. What I'm going to do is I'm going to say that my shear, my shear force in bending moments is going to be the, the resultant of, of this of the, I think what I put is, yeah, bending moment is going to be the two bending moments. So it's going to be the, you just cal calculate the result in here. And the shear force is going to be the, between this one and this one, okay? As a title of example here, okay? Um, just to, uh, this is just an example, guys, okay? So if I do this, so if I run this now, one, so it creates, it creates the folder for the raft here, okay? I create it. If I do this now, uh, do the resultant, and then uh, here is where the NumPy appears because you remember the, in the last session that we talked about square roots. That you, if you want to do square roots, square root, um, uh, square roots on uh, on single values, you can use the Math op Math Python library. But unfortunately, Math library doesn't work on arrays. Arrays elements, so in vectorized elements, it doesn't work. So for that, you have to use NumPy to oper to do uh, vectorized operations uh, in vectors and columns. So it's the same. I mean, you see that's the same way. It calls it math, but instead of have math, it call you put np dot square root, and then you do the square root of this, and then save the the outcome in the new column called combined. And then what you get going to get is uh, two columns at the end. Which are called combined shear forces and bending moments, okay? And um, and uh, yeah, I mean, if I do this now, so what else? Oh yeah, the unique the unique values again, same thing as before. And uh, then if I run here already, I can run the script because it's already the code. The bad the the, the missing code is embedded in is the hidden code here, but. Uh, if I run this, then I generate this. But basically, what you're going to be provide is going to provide this set. What you have to define is this portion here. This portion that I'm highlighting here. This is the part that is missing, and this is the part that you guys have to figure out how to do it. And again, no worries. Next session, uh, next week, we will uh, we will send out the complete script in case if you if you are not able to do this by yourself, you're going to get the solution at the end. And yeah. And uh, yeah, that's it seems, seems that that's everything, guys. And uh, I think we are already reach, reaching the time, but I think we can spend a couple five, ten minutes if if necessary, just for 
final uh, final queries and if you guys have any any questions and uh, yeah please let me know um, any questions thank you so much very interesting session thank you just out of curiosity did you guys manage um, to do the exercises uh, before not having the um, the solution uh, in front of you, or you just you only managed to sort out once you got the solution in front of you. Yeah, I can do the uh, second session exercise myself. Okay, that's good to know. Session three, I did not have the enough. Okay. Yep, I think uh, I think uh, I'm also cautious that this is um, this is a subject that um, to explain this in in one hour and a half sessions it's not um, um it's not the type of subject that you can teach like in just a couple of hours it's something that like i said before in the first session i think it's um it's the type of activity that requires you guys to put the get put your hands on the dirt so to so to speak um you you it's good to see from to to learn from others it's good to see other people's scripts it's good to to uh, do courses but at the end of the day if you really want to master this you have to find examples for of of or your my recommendation is try to find something that you guys identify some tasks that you have to do in your projects that you think well maybe if if i if i have to do this repetitive and in a repetitive way but if there's a way to automate this this might be a good way maybe i spent some time to automate this but once i automate it is there and as you can see i mean for example for this one here for the piles if if i create once for the piles i would say that for the wraps most of the code is there i just have to tweak a little bit so yeah Great effort. Great effort. Thank you. Okay. Well, um, any more questions, guys? I mean, if you um, if you if you don't if you don't have any questions anymore, I mean, I will, I can share my. Uh, let, I'm not sure if you guys have. I will put you on my my email if in case if you guys wanted to reach me out for some questions and stuff. So, yep, feel free, feel free to send me an email. Okay. Um, might not, I might not. Sometimes I might not respond straight away, but I will try. I will try to respond in due time. Uh, answers just just out of curious. Uh, I I just wondering, have you used this uh, approach? I mean, similar approach to other software. Um, like I I mean, it's not necessary. F F uh, file element. Uh, for example, mm -hmm. have have you used it in yeah, um, Snopw? Something like that. Which software? Sorry. Snopw. Snopw. Uh, uh, Snopw. Yeah. Uh, well, Snop, I, I think the problem with the Snopw is, and this is something that I was, I think we might change in the future, because you know that Snopw was now bought by Bentley, which is the same owner of Plexis. And uh, as far as I know, uh, Slopeblab didn't that doesn't have an API. The only reason we can do this in Plaxis is because there's an API in place created yeah. by Plaxis that allows scripts to communicate with the program. So once they once they develop, and I think it's on their pipeline, if I'm not mistaken, is 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 on their pipeline somewhere in the future to add some automated stuff but i'm not sure when these are going to happen to be honest but if that happens then you can do it but 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 i can give out examples i did this for example if you are familiarized with the oasis software uh, like xdisp pdisp yeah yeah you can do that with python okay they have okay. they have an api they have an api and uh, it's all about i would say my, the only the only thing i would say about xdisp is Plaxis as uh, Bentley and Plexis, they create an API that is quite straightforward to use. So, like I said, if you know the Plexis commands, it's very easy to figure out what is the equivalent in Python. Always 
is a bit more black box, I would say. The, the, they, <laughs> they have a documentation for the API, but um, I would say, for even for myself, in order to get to, to understand how to use it, I had to contact several times their support team to understand, okay, well, I want to do this. Where can I find more information on what are the command lines or what is the equivalent Python code to do that? You know what I mean? So um, it's a bit of a investigation. The good thing about Plux is if, um, I mean, that in terms of Plux is, I mean, if, like I said, if, if, if you go, you have, if you go to command reference, you have a good command reference that explains what each command does, right? But that's inside of Plaxis. But you also have, if I go back here to Plaxis, you also have like a, a scripting reference, which kind of gives you like good examples. Like, well, for example, if you want to create a surface, it, create, it, it, it tells you, oh, if you want to create a surface, use this methodology. You see what I mean? Mm -hmm. um, and also they have a very good knowledge base uh, and and the support team is very responsive also. So if chances are that if you contact us, their support team, they will come back to you very 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 quickly with with the answer you want um, with the answer for your problem. So so yeah, it depends on the software. It depends it depends if the API is in place. It depends the documentation. So but yeah, it's possible. I know for example other software I didn't use myself, but I know people that use this for losers. For example, loses as you can communicate with Python also. So yeah. Yeah, good. Thank you. Yeah, hi. So my question is that uh, can we create this Jupyter notebook? We have Python code. So can we create this as a executable uh, file? So we can uh, just run all the files at one click. So, sorry, I didn't understand. Sorry, you it's didn't, yeah, you it's just yeah, it's just like a software. So suppose we have link, and we can click executable file dot exe file, the entire Python script. So you're saying that something like to inside link, you want to create like a, a link, but for the Jupyter notebook. Uh, not Jupyter notebook. This py entire Python script. Uh, somewhere I've seen uh, earlier. Uh, from IT team, uh, wherever I am working, so they have created one code. Uh, in that same code, uh, they are taking inputs from uh, user, uh, and then the, mm -hmm. they are generating the results uh, in uh, whatever phases uh, we are selecting. Uh, the result will be generated, and then uh, it will be saved as a Excel file in same folder. Uh, but uh, just we need to uh, we need to click on one uh, executable file, just like .exe file. And the code was written yeah, in Python uh, script only. Yeah. 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 I mean, what? Uh, so instead, instead of having this in Jupyter, you want something that yeah, it, yeah, is yeah, more yeah. easy. More. You don't need. Yeah. That's that's one of the things that because Python isn't it's it's a, a, a an interpret language. Uh, it's um, so it's it, the, the so it's a code that it requires to have an interpreter to run so basically that's you could, if you want to run if you want to create a an a, 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 a x file x a, a suitable file yeah uh, you need to compile the code in order to create something that can run without having python installed in the background with python the the advantage of python is that you can run codes and if there's a problem in the code you can debug the part of the problem so if the, the code doesn't run, if something fails in the middle you, it's easier to debug it's easy to understand what is happening but requires to have python it requires for you to open jupyter notebook in the background stuff like that uh whether for example c plus plus what it does is you create a script you compile into binary binary code that creates these executable codes you click run but if there's a problem in the code it's difficult to debug so you, there are ways to do this, but the work the workflow is not so straightforward for Python to do that. Okay, uh, and can we use uh, ID uh, as just like a spider or PyCharm? Uh, oh yeah, yeah. Because you can, you can, here you my use... understanding here it is that all the libraries uh, we are utilizing uh, from this uh, Plexus itself. Uh, we are installing all the libraries yep. libraries in Plexis, but in the uh, Spider or PyCharm, uh, we need to install uh, uh, the, all the libraries separately, right? 
Uh, well, I mean, for this one, you also, for example, if you recall at the beginning of this uh, workshop, you were, you were sent like a list of uh, uh, instructions because yeah, yeah, the, yeah, yeah. The the one yeah, that the requirements, one, yeah, I I remember the one uh, the one the the Python because it it depends what is the Python environment you have installed in your machine, and the the one that comes with Plaxis by default, um, it's very limited in terms of uh, uh, I mean, it's it's the right version. But it doesn't have all, for example, it doesn't have pandas. It doesn't have um, so. Yeah, you can. It doesn't have pandas. It doesn't have uh, uh, matplot. I don't think. I'm not sure if there's a, it contains the matplotlib. But there's a lot of useful functions that are not installed, and you have to install manually. But yeah, you can. You can either use. You can either use the the one that is provided on Plaxis. You can either use your own customized. So, for example, what I'm showing here. Sometimes I run uh, Spider. Sometimes I run uh, uh, Visual Visual Studio. For example, you can use Visual Studio. You just have to make sure that, in terms of, uh, you just need to make sure that when you run the script in the, in your in your desire in the in the editor, you are using the correct uh, Python environment to run this. And for also, for example, not. In this case, I'm running the one that so if I go to your to Python expert Python and then I think it's uh, configure, but so I can use default. But if I want, if I don't want to use the the Plaxis one for some reason, I can say well use a, a certain one that is installed somewhere in in our in our machines, and then I can say well install the required components so it makes sure that it that these required components is the ones that allows to run these boilerplates that allows to the script and the program to communicate to each other. So if you do this and install the required components, then in theory, in theory, you can use Spider, you can use Visual Studio, you can use whatever you want, to be honest. Okay. Uh, so recently uh, I'm working in one project and uh, I have created uh, one uh, Python script uh, to generate output. Uh, so mm -hmm. uh, uh, after uh, seeing your video only, I started doing, and so I used Open PI Excel uh, there. Mm -hmm. So which one would be better, whether Pandas or uh, Open PI Excel? I think Pandas. Uh, open uh, uh, this this one that you open. It's only to read Excel. I mean, it's more. To, yeah, yeah, I yeah. Mean, well, actually, actually, it, it has these advantages. These event, uh, advantages. These advantages. The 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 open one is a. Uh, um it allows you to read Excel, but you can also do operations inside of Excel itself. For example, if you want to uh create, let's say, if I'm not, I'm not mistaken, if you want to create plots inside of the Excel or create formats, you can do that. Pandas, in my opinion, it's mainly I like to think pandas is and I'm not joking when I say this, and you already see that from the examples I provided that it's an Excel on steroids, because you can you can do a lot of this stuff like creating plots, like creating eighty, uh, like the 200, 214 lines in one uh, in one minute. When in, if doing this in in Excel will take ages. You yeah. know what I mean? So, so it's I think if I, in terms of data in, in data processing, and so if you want if if you're talking about let's say data processing and uh, and the data data structure and um, I mean data cleaning. Uh, yeah, I would say I would say that pandas is is the way to go, but it really depends what is the personal preference. Some people might prefer. I, mean, I know that, for example, now there are other versions. Uh, there are alternative versions of pandas that do the same thing, but. But that's more relevant for data science field. That it's more efficient because you use it's, it, you, it, 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 pandas. One of the limitation of pandas is only. At, I think at the moment it's still only use one core of the your CPU. But other package already use like multi core. So for us it really doesn't make any difference because we are not dealing with million of that uh, rows. But you can you can appreciate that if you're talking about stats and. Uh, statistics and uh, surveys and stuff like that. It, it can make it can make a huge difference. Okay, so while using this uh, Jupyter notebook, uh, so it is connected with server, right? And we are extracting the results. Uh, 
so is yeah, it so possible yeah. uh, is it possible to the minimize sometimes uh, some time uh, when i was using so i was extracting uh, many results uh, mm-hmm. from uh, flexi so sometimes it was taking uh, longer time mm. Well, it, it depends what you're extracting. Were you extracting results one by one or you were going to extract For example, if you go back to the se- last session, when we extract the results, we didn't extract the results along the pile one by one. We just, with one command, we extract all the results for that specific pile straight away. And then the process, then the next step was just to sorting the information to the right places. But but if you if you are extracting, let's say if you if you go, if you ask to plugs, okay, well, I want to uh, extract results on the pile, and I want to extract for each node individually. Then it might take ages because he has to run one line of code at a time every time. You see what I mean? So uh, yeah, it, de- it depends how you structure the code. Uh, oh, okay. Uh, actually, the problem was there. Uh, I was using. Uh, I I need to simulate the cutoff wall. So cutoff wall was simulated the, as the combination of plate and volume element. Mm-hmm. So yeah. So I was extracting the results uh, for volume element also and for plate element also. Then I was but interpolating. But were you referring to the node? Ah, okay. Uh, so we basically were, you were extracting results for per node. Uh, yeah. Each node. Yeah, I mean, if you if you have a lot of nodes, it might take ages. So I, I'll, what I would recommend is if you have a look on the video that, uh, I mean, if, let me see if I can just open here very quickly the, the script for that one. Um, just also questions about the time, but let's see. So this is the complete one. So if you get, if you use this one here, this code here. I'm not sure if you can see my screen here. Yeah, yeah, yeah same code. I this, used. The, so, um, well, I, then I don't know. I mean, uh, without seeing the code myself, it would be difficult to understand what's the the the, the reason for that. But, uh, but yeah, but 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 keep in keep in mind that if you have very complex models, I mean, this one was quick because the model wasn't too large. And also another thing I think it's also to take into account is if it is a big model. A very heavy model, and sometimes you know when it takes time to move from one phase to the other. That can reduce a little bit the time. In this one was quick because it's a, it's not a heavy model, so it's something that you can change phases. You can sh- access the information very straightforward. So I, I would say that keep an eye, keep an eye on the model size to see if if you if you had like a smaller model, will that speed up the speed, for example? Yeah, yeah. Oh, okay. But again, but, but again, at, at the end of the, even if it takes a bit more time, mm-hmm. would it? I mean, if if it is if it is something that it takes like I don't know thirty minutes to do it, but at the end of the day, you save two days, three days of work. I would still consider this to be a a, a positive outcome. Uh, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, earlier it was taking around uh, 40 minutes and now i was uh, able to do in within uh, four or five yep. minutes so that was yep. really yep. significant yeah yeah, yeah it, it depends how you structure the code it depends a lot of things so um yeah but that's why that's why it's important to for example when i when i use that random approach in the smart way i mean in this case doesn't impact on on the on, on, on impact on the on the on the calculation time, but if you have to do this in a large data set, then is is not the most efficient way to do that. So that's where that's where you see that's how you differentiate someone who is good in Python in scripting from those who are not, because if someone is not so knowledgeable about scripting, they will tend to do something very streamlined, like like. A, Following repetitive steps, rather, uh, uh, and if it is someone experienced that probably knows, okay, well, I can skip, I can simplify ten, one hundred lines in just one line. You can see that it can make huge difference. Yeah, yeah, that's true. And could you please uh, send that Python script for Oasis also? Uh, we can uh, refer. 
Uh, I don't have here oh. with me. I mean, it's uh, I did that. I did that a long time ago. But uh, oh yeah, when I was working in a different company. But uh, yeah, that uh, uh, I, what I rec recommend it to you guys to do is um, if you if you're interested uh, um, on the manual of Oasis, you have the documentation there, and there are some uh, examples there. They uh, on their on their software they have uh, uh, some tutorials. So that's okay. that will be the first the first starting point. Yeah, I I will go through them. Okay, and guys. Um, thank, think... Thanks. Your videos were really very helpful. Oh, uh, that that's uh, the, the, um, uh, thank you very much. Welcome. Yeah. Um. Well, guys, I think let's call let's call the the day on this, and uh, I hope that you guys enjoyed. I, I appreciate that. For some, probably some people might be already something that they already knew a bit, so nothing new. But for some people, it might be might that be a bit a lot of information to process. But uh, uh, again, like I said, this is this is just a, a way to raise awareness. And if you really want to get into this, my recommendation is to keep practice on this. And uh, yeah, I mean, who knows? In the future, we can talk. We bump, or you can always reach me in LinkedIn or via my email. So yeah, hope to see you guys in the, in, in the next uh, next time. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. Yep. Thank you so much for your time. Thank you. Yep. Welcome. See you next time, guys. Yeah. Bye. Bye. Actually.